Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make these easy Girl Scout sashes and paper Girl Scout cookies for stuffed animals. Even though I was never a Girl Scout, I always loved playing Girl Scouts with my stuffed animals. Now let's get started! Now to make the sashes, they're actually really easy. All you'll need is some felt. I'm using green and brown since these are pretty much the colors I think of when I think Girl Scouts. And you'll also need scissors and yarn. And to make these fake badges, I'm just going to be using some stickers. Now this first green one, I'm going to be making for a Build-A-Bear, so a pretty big stuffed animal. And I'm just going to lay it on top of my stuffed animal and just see how wide I want the sash to be. And I'm going to do about 2 or 3 inches like this. But now I'm just going to cut out that strip from the long side of my felt. And the longer the better, but it actually doesn't have to be too long, so don't worry about it fitting all the way to the back. And I'm just matching up this bottom part to the top to make sure my strip is even. And I'm just going to lay this on my stuffed animal, just checking if I want to make it thinner or not. And this looked good to me. I'm going to wrap it around to the back. And as you can see, the two ends of mine don't exactly meet, but that's okay. There's about a two inch distance between them, so I'm just going to remember that. And now I'm going to make some small cuts along the bottom of each end. So I'm just folding over the bottom edge and making a small cut on each side. And that'll make two small holes that we can tie the yarn to. And I'm going to cut a 4 to 5 inch piece of yarn off. And this is longer than I need, but I just want to make sure it's not too tight. And I'm going to cut two of those, and then start inserting it through the holes we made. And then I'm just tying it on with one knot. And now I'm going to tie the other one to the other hole. And after that, I'm going to make two holes on the other side. And that way, when we put this on the stuffed animal, we can just tie the yarn onto the other holes. And there's no sewing needed to connect the ends. And that's why your strip of felt doesn't have to be too long, because it really just has to cover the front, and then the string can just be longer in the back. So now I'm putting this on my stuffed animal, and then just inserting the strings through the opposite holes, and then just tying a knot loosely so this can be adjusted to fit other size stuffed animals. And after that, your sash is basically finished, but it's looking a little empty without any badges. So in place of real badges, I'm just going to be using these colorful circular stickers. And they really don't have to be circular. They can be whatever kind of stickers you have. I used to have my stuffed animals actually earn the badges by tying knots or making fire or whatever Girl Scouts do. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to put some stickers on. And I didn't do a great job here, but you'll see later the other stickers I found and added. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing, but for a smaller stuffed animal. I'm pretty sure the brown sashes are for the younger girls when they are still brownies, so I figured I'd make the brown sash for her. And that's not to say all small stuffed animals are young, but she does look pretty young, so I just had her wear this one. And since this one was smaller, I think the stickers were just a better size and looked more like badges. And I did something a little different for her badges that I wanted to show. So I put a circle one like before, but I noticed a lot of Girl Scout badges are actually triangle shaped. So using my same circle stickers, I just cut off three of the edges to make a triangle. And I did this to another one as well, and I found that they just fit together a little bit better and looked a little more like badges. I also added other stickers later on, but that's it. That's all to easy Girl Scout sashes. Now I'm going to move on to making the cookies. And these are pretty easy since they're mostly paper. So I'm just using some construction paper, black cardstock, and a little thin cardboard. And you also need some paint and paint brushes, scissors, and I also used a palette and some Mod Podge, but you can always just use school glue or a glue stick. And you'll also need a bottle cap to trace your cookies and a little sponge. I'm going to start with the Savannah Smiles, and I think this year they were replaced with another lemon cookie, but this was one of the cookies I used to make a long time ago, so I wanted to include it. All I'm going to do is cut out kind of a wedge half circle shape out of some yellow construction paper. And I like the edges to be very soft and rounded, so I'm going to go in and just soften this up a little later. And you can actually just fold your paper and cut these all out at the same time. But I like these cookies looking a little imperfect and just looking different from each other. So I like to cut them out separately. But if I was making a lot, I would just fold the paper a few times before cutting them out so I could get more in a shorter amount of time. After that, I'm just going to grab a scrap of paper I'm not using, and I'm also going to need some white paint. So I just have some on my palette here. And now I'm going to grab that sponge. I just cut this off of a bathroom sponge. And to mimic the powdered sugar on actual Savannah Smiles, I'm just going to dab some white paint onto my sponge, and then dab that onto these yellow wedges. So I'm making sure to get all the paint evenly on my sponge, and then just testing this out on my scrap paper to make sure it won't paint the whole cookie white. 
And so now I'm just going to lightly tap this on. And I know the actual cookies are completely covered in powdered sugar, which of course is delicious, but for these I still wanted to see that beautiful yellow color, so I just went a little light on the powdered sugar. Now I'm going to do the same thing to all my other pieces. And after the paint is dried, I'm going to turn them over and do the same thing to the other side. And after you let that dry, the Savannah Smiles are done! I love how these turned out. I think they're super cute and weren't too hard to make. The next cookie I'm going to make is the iconic Thin Mint. I'm going to be using black cardstock for this, and I know Thin Mints aren't black, but they are very dark, so I just chose black. And to get that perfect circle, you can just trace a bottle cap. And then fold the paper up and then cut the circle out so you can get a lot at one time. But I actually have this circle shaped paper cutter that I'm going to use instead and I just got this from a friend and this is definitely not necessary. But since I have it I'm just going to use this to cut out my circles. And to make each cookie you're actually going to need two of these circles so I'm going to first cut out two circles. And the next step is actually to crumple one up as much as I possibly can. This can take some time doing it for each individual circle, but the reason I didn't just crumple an entire piece of paper first is because it would get stuck in my paper cutter that way, so if you're not using a paper cutter you should definitely just crumple the paper first and then cut them out. And you'll want to crumple it till it's very wrinkled and kind of soft. After that I'm just going to stick these two pieces of paper together, and I'm going to do this using Mod Podge, which is the same as school glue except it dries completely clear. So I'm going to brush it on the wrinkled paper. And you can always do this with regular glue or just a glue stick. And now I'm just going to stick them together. I'm going to make sure to press them together really well. And now the last thing I'm going to do is brush some Mod Podge over the top to give them a nice shine. But if you don't have Mod Podge, this step is optional. I'm not sure how accurate I was making this look like the original, but to me it does kind of remind me of a Thin Mint. And just look at this. If this isn't a Thin Mint, I don't know what is. The last one I'm going to make is my favorite, which is the Samoa. And for this you can use any color construction paper or cardstock or even just a thin piece of cardboard. And since they are circles, I'm going to be using my paper cutter to cut these out as well. And the next step is to add the hole in the center, and you could always just fold the paper in half and cut out a circle. But since I have it, I'm just going to use this single hole punch to punch out a few circles actually, because the hole punch's circle is actually too small, and it definitely doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm going to grab my thin cardboard and just cut off a small chunk. And now I'm going to cut some very thin strips off of these. I'd say about a millimeter wide is good. After I've cut a few of these, I'm just going to stack them and now cut them into very small rectangles. And this is going to add texture and mimic the coconut on the cookie. I actually ended up needing a lot more of this, but for now I'm just going to start pasting this onto my cookie base using Mod Podge. And so I'm just putting a little layer down and then sprinkling the cardboard on top. And it's good for it to overlap a little just to give it more texture. And as you can see, this stuff goes fast, so make sure to cut out a lot. And now I'm going to continue covering the rest of the cookie. And this does take a little bit of time, but it does end up looking really cool in the end. So after I've covered the entire thing, I'm just going to let it sit and dry. Now it's time to paint over that caramely color, and so I just have some orange mixed with brown. And no matter how hard I tried, I could not capture that bright, rich caramel color that actual Samoas have. But I tried to get as close as possible with the paints I had, and I think you still get the idea that it's caramel. And I had to bring back that scrap from the Savannah Smiles so I wouldn't make a mess. And you really have to pile on that paint to get through that texture, but try your best to cover the entire thing. After that's done drying, I got a new piece of scratch paper, and now I'm going to cover this with Mod Podge, just to give it a shine and make it look a little bit more like caramel. And after letting this dry, I actually ended up changing the color a little bit, but here it is resealed with Mod Podge. And now I'm just going to go around the edges and rough up the edges with my scissors, just to make the round edges a little more jagged. And the last step is adding the chocolate, so I'm going to take a very small paintbrush and some dark brown paint, and I'm just going to make a little chocolate drizzle on top, so I'm going to just do a few stripes across the entire thing. And I made sure to be super careful in making this line thin, but with all the texture on top, you don't really notice if it gets messed up. And after that, I'm going to lightly go around the edges, just to show that the chocolate is peeking up from the bottom, and going around the inside as well. And after that's dried, I'm just going to flip it over and paint the bottom brown as well. And after that, your Samoa is done! I know this cookie was definitely the most work to make, but I do think it looks very similar to the original. With all the cookies made, it's time for the Girl Scouts to start selling! I like to just sell them by the cookies since they are pretty big for stuffed animals, 
and you'll want to be able to see and appreciate all the beautiful cookies you've made. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give this video a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye!